Hello Grade 12s and welcome to the Answer Series Life Sciences videos based on our study guides. In this video, we deal with Part 1 of Evolution in Present Times. We'll look at four different examples of evolution in present times as seen in different organisms. In this video, resistance to insecticides in insects, resistance to antibiotics in bacteria. Then part two video will focus on resistance to antiretrovirals in HIV viruses and beak and body size in Galapagos finches. We've already looked at evolution as a process that occurs over long periods of time. It's difficult to observe as scientists often rely on observations in history. Rapid reproduction in some modern species, however, shows current evolution with natural selection over shorter periods of time. These are all examples of microevolution, in other words, evolution within a species. For example, viruses, bacteria, some insects and some bird species can reproduce very quickly. Rapid cell division increases the chances of mutations occurring. As the environment changes, whether it's introducing insecticides or introducing antibiotics, some mutations may occur that are beneficial and provide resistance to increase the chances of survival. Four observable examples of current evolution include insects developing resistance to insecticides or bacteria to antibiotics or HIV viruses developing resistance to antiretrovirals or finches developing different beak and body sizes on the Galapagos Islands. Developing resistance means the ability of organisms to reproduce despite factors that would normally limit or inhibit or restrict their growth. The first example we study, number one, is resistance of insects to insecticides. A very common insecticide that was used all over the world is DDT. DDT was very effective in controlling insect pests, particularly mosquitoes that spread malaria. Over time, however, many insects became resistant to DDT, and this can be explained in terms of the evolutionary mechanism of natural selection. Insects multiply very quickly, like cockroaches or bedbugs, fleas, lice or mosquitoes, etc. This increases the chances of a random mutation occurring. If a mutation makes the insect resistant to DDT, it survives exposure to the insecticide and it multiplies and passes on the resistant gene to its offspring. The initial population is DDT sensitive. In other words, they haven't been exposed to DDT before. DDT application then may result in random mutations and this introduces variation in the population. DDT sensitive individuals die out and DDT resistant insects have the beneficial mutated gene and they are selected to live. DDT resistance may develop rapidly as a result of one mutation or over longer periods of time due to a series of mutations in more than one gene. So there are different degrees of resistance that may develop in a population. When DDT is applied as an insecticide, it acts as a selection pressure. Selection pressure drives natural selection or serves as a trigger for natural selection. A natural selection ensures that DDT-sensitive or non-adapted insects will die out, become extinct, and DDT-resistant or adapted insects will survive. The favorable or the beneficial gene, the resistant characteristic, is then transferred to the offspring during reproduction. The frequency of the DDT-resistant insects will increase in the population until eventually the entire population is DDT resistant. DDT resistance in a population may develop very fast if caused by one mutation. In this diagram, the first generation are mostly DDT sensitive. Rapid reproduction may cause a mutation that makes an insect resistant. After DDT application, most insects die out except the mutated forms that have resistance. Later generations with more DDT applications, they result in more mutant forms surviving and the development of a DDT-resistant population. So we have a 
population with a majority DDT-sensitive insects and a few mutated forms that happen to be resistant. After application of DDT, most sensitive insects die out. The survivors, mostly mutants with DDT resistance, they survive and they reproduce. With repeated DDT application, eventually an entire population is DDT resistant. Here's an example of a data response graph question about insecticide resistance. The graph shows the number of mosquitoes with different genotypes for a particular characteristic over time, showing the dates of DDT spraying. Some genes are unfavorable to surviving DDT and some are favorable. If we look at genotype big R small r, we see the numbers initially decreasing after spraying and then after two years numbers start increasing as they develop resistance to the insecticide. Here's another graph that shows how the number of resistant species increases with an increase in the volume of insecticides used over time. Although DDT was a very effective insecticide, it was banned in most countries because it accumulated in the food chain and caused large-scale damage to top predators. The second example of evolution in present times is resistance to antibiotics in bacteria. Antibiotics kill bacteria or inhibit their growth, and they were often overprescribed for any infection, not just bacterial infections. So random mutations made more and more bacteria increasingly resistant to specific antibiotics. More and more drug-resistant bacteria are now unaffected by previously deadly drugs. This development of drug-resistant bacteria can be explained by natural selection. The random mutations cause variation in the population as some bacteria are drug sensitive and some are drug resistant. So the application of antibiotics then change the environment and act as a selection pressure. In other words, environmental factors that put pressure on the population and trigger natural selection. The drug-sensitive individuals die out, the adapted drug-resistant individuals that are selected to survive and multiply. The beneficial gene is then passed on and inherited by the offspring. Eventually, the entire population is drug-resistant to a specific antibiotic. This simple illustration shows how antibiotics can cause an antibiotic-sensitive population of bacteria to develop into an antibiotic-resistant population as mutated forms survive and multiply and eventually form an entire population of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. In this population of drug-sensitive bacteria, we apply an antibiotic. Due to rapid reproduction, a mutation may occur. This resistant bacterium has an advantage or a favorable or a beneficial gene that gives it resistance to this particular antibiotic. So it survives and it multiplies and eventually we have a population that is mostly drug resistant. Another diagram to illustrate the same process. Antibiotic-sensitive bacteria multiply rapidly. A mutation occurs that provides resistance to a particular antibiotic. Application of the antibiotic acts as a selection pressure and the antibiotic-sensitive bacteria die out, but the antibiotic-resistant bacteria survive. They multiply to form an antibiotic-resistant population. An example of antibiotic-resistant bacteria is seen in TB, or tuberculosis. TB is the largest cause of death from infectious diseases in the world. There are two types of resistant TB, MDR-TB, or multi-drug-resistant TB, and XDR, or extensively drug-resistant TB. MDR-TB, or multi-drug-resistant, develops when patients don't complete the full course of antibiotics. Mutant drug-resistant bacteria get the opportunity to survive and multiply and pass on their resistant mutated gene. MDR-TB is resistant to more than two antibiotics and is known as a superbug as it doesn't respond to several antibiotics and it's difficult to treat. 
XDR-TB, on the other hand, or extensively drug-resistant TB, is resistant to many antibiotics. It's common in HIV patients as they have a weakened immune system. Both MDR and XDR-TB patients need to complete the full course of antibiotics and they need correct management of their condition. DOTS is one example of a strategy of ensuring patients are managed correctly. DOTS is directly observed therapy or treatment short course, where medical staff carefully monitor TB patients to ensure that they have completed the complete course of antibiotics. Careful management of TB antibiotic treatment is essential to prevent the development of more drug-resistant forms of TB bacteria. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series your key to exam success.